Hello and welcome to this week's video. Well, a lot of catching up to do, not just because of the big two month gap between the last two recorded videos, but a big catching up gap with sticker swaps. Uh, thank you very much to Daniel Villarino in the United States. Absolutely brilliant channel, lots of subscribers. Uh, really nice man as well. And not only does he have to make his videos in English, he also does them in Spanish as well. So you could learn some Spanish if you choose one of those ones to watch. Check it out. There'll be a link below. Um, in these days of continuing lockdowns or restrictions, I've got hair in my mouth. There we go. Restrictions of what we can and can't do. Um, if you're missing your local wood turning club and want to share a bit of the, the chat that goes with it, the wood turning 360 um, club is worth giving a look at. Um, for a modest monthly fee, you get a couple of demos at least a month, sometimes more. You also get a nice little badge and a pin. Um, there is a lot of colouring work being done on there because it's run or started by Martin Saban Smith, who's now got a nice little business venture going with Les Thorne, by the way. Um, so I hope that's going well and I hope you're able to get people in and be doing classes. Um, I've got people in and doing classes, but that's different. They're all a bit smaller than maybe. Uh, adult wood turners. Um, next one is JP from the uh, South Africa. Thank you very much, JP, for the sticker. Links below. And finally, um, you know, I use a lot of chestnut products. I love their colours. Uh, their wood turning group conquers and um, is on Facebook. And there's also um, they've started something called Conquers Live, uh, which is a, a sort of an offshoot from the Conquers uh, group and also from the Wood Tony Weekenders that they've done a couple of. Um, so check them out as well if you want to get some uh, some free uh, Wood Tony demos. Right, links to all of that below. Right, now let's think of a project for today. And I've given it some thought, and I'm going to have a go at doing one of these again. This, uh, if you were able to join the Wood Turning Weekender, the virtual one at the beginning of August, that does seem a long time ago now, um, was me trying out a new idea. And it's not brilliantly realised, so I'm going to have another go at it. So I'm going to turn this off, uh, colour it with some uh, ebonising lacquer, and then start again with a bit of airbrushing, but using metallic and iridescent paints and um, hopefully make it a bit neater this time. So uh, the first thing you see me doing is, as usual, turning something off. Hmm. Now I'm just going to turn this little curve, first of all, just to neaten that up. Well, I've got my lathe turned on. It's going to have a little foot, but uh, just crewing this up. I think for this shape to work, it needs to have a curve at the bottom. Give it a little bit of lightness and, and lift it. Yeah, so that's a pretty nice curve. Come onto the overhead camera and you should be able to see that curve. It's not a straight line, it's a curved line. Now that will need just a little bit of sanding. It's a piece of, um, I can't remember if it's a piece of elm or a piece of acacia. It might, hmm. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll remember when I get this bit done. Now, for this to give it a bit more of a dynamic shape, as you can see at the top, it is tapered. If it were straight up, I think it would be a little more static looking and perhaps not as pleasing. And again, I only need to take just a little bit off so that I can get the colour reapplied. And to keep the taper going, 
I'm lifting my back hand. Being careful as I get to the end here not to hit the cup. Always slips off a little bit. And then a little scrape to reduce the sanding. Yeah, it's a bit of um it's a bit of acacia I seem to remember. And the reason I don't mind playing around with it is this huge crack, which uh will be a problem when I turn the inside out, but for trying out ideas, it's absolutely not a problem. Right, I need to get my blast gates opened up and then get my face shield and mask back on. Who put this computer monitor right in the way of my blast gates? And the reason for the sealer is so that you don't have to put so much paint on. I'm soaking in more into the end grain. And that needs just a few minutes to dry off and then a little fine cut back. Should have put the dust extractor on but only a little, little bit of dust coming now. Now, reasonably smooth, apart from this big split, of course, which I keep going on about. Oh, am I beginning to sound a bit repetitive? Surely not! Surely not! Uh, right, next thing is uh, lacquer. Ebonising lacquer, of course, and a vapour mask. Okay, that's had a good 20 minutes to dry. Just going to take a little bit off, just smoothing it down. Now, it's very open grain, this wood, so even two coats might not be enough to, to fill the grain. But I don't really mind having that still showing through anyway. Okay, stop that and give a little wipe with a tack cloth. Just to make sure I remove all the dust. And we wait again, the drying game. Right, so I'm going to use my Harder and Steenbeck siphon fed, gravity suction fed, bottom fed airbrush, which has got the quick connector on it. And i um, going to use that with uh, chestnuts iridescent colours and going to use them undiluted and hopefully the air gun will cope with that. Let's get it connected to the airline. Right, the return of masking tape. Now it's had plenty of time to dry, so this shouldn't be an issue with lifting any of the colour. I'm going to overlap the colours a bit, so that's why I'm using the tape to, to give me a sort of rough area where I'm going to start off with. And I'm going to start off with yellow. 
Now, this has been in the bottle since the beginning of August. I can see the colour is separated a little, so it's going to need to be shaken. There is a little bleed hole on the top, which I don't want the paint to come out of. So I'll give it a good shake up. Put my gloves back on. Let's get this onto the black. Put too much paint on there and then move it around. Now, I'm not very happy with this one. Now I am. Ha ha ha! It is a different experience using paint and stain, so if you've not used paint in airbrushes before, good to practice. You know me, I like to practice on the finished piece. It's much more fun. Right, well, here we are. It's been drying for a week. And the eagle eye amongst you might have spotted that it's on a different lathe because I have sold my river mac. I'm down to just one working wood lathe in my shed. And I'm enjoying having a little bit more room. Right, let's get all this tape off and get it ready for the next colour. I was a bit concerned that the tape had been on for a bit long and it may have uh, needed a bit more encouragement to come off, but I think you can see it's coming off perfectly easily. So, going to put another colour on now and have this overlapping. And let's see if we can disguise that rather messy edge. And put one here between these two. Right, next bit. Spraying time with the turquoise. Turquoise iridescent paint. Now I have put a bit of reducer in this because it was finding it a bit tricky to come out. It does mean it's a bit wetter. Some of the paint is still a bit wet on the tape, so let's see. I probably should have been patient. One day, one day. Again, like a lot of these things that I try out, I haven't really. I've given a sort of bit of a thought about the layout, the design, but it's not always my strong suit, is it? <laughs> Having something neatly planned out. Right, let's get some ready. Just building it up slowly. A little bit fluttery. I've got to do some more work with these paints. A bit of heat just to make sure. And to get a little crackling going on. It cracks along the grain, but also the grain is going this way. But it also cracks sort of 90 degrees to that those grain lines as well. In some places. Where it's 
And I want to keep some black. I don't want to put a colour over the top of it all. But I also don't really want... If I'm going to put lines on, I want them to be in the same... Uh, I want them to be parallel all the way round. So if I draw a line... Oh, look at the mess I've got into in these gloves. I think they had their day. Uh, Right. What was I trying to say? If I draw a line here and another line here, then I want that line, I want them to be at the same angle. I don't want one going like that and another one going like this. I think it's going to be back to the ebonizing lacquer and I'm going to protect most of this colour. I'm going to lacquer over that edge. And why am I going for ebonizing lacquer? Well, the main reason, so that it matches, it's got the same sheen as what is beneath the colours that I've put on. Um, but also, that's if it is coming from an aerosol, it gives a very nice, neat spray going to break up some of the the way the colours overlap which I really like but it also might look attractive as well who knows so I'm going to keep this half without doing that and you know maybe the mess is part of the charm maybe it isn't and then in here I'm going to put some ebonizing lacquer I wonder how long it will be before I stop protecting my newly positioned lathe here. Right, give that a little while to dry. Let's see. Oh, that is done. And I was hoping to keep the bottom completely black, but I have got some red on there because I, when I put the red on, I went this way instead of that way. So that was not a brilliant way of doing it. Round here. Oh, golly, which looks better? I think I... Oh... I'm not sure I can choose. This does not look good. I think we can all agree on that. And this doesn't look good. Now, if you didn't want to do it with the lacquer, but you didn't want it to be as messy as what I have made it, your other choice, of course, is... Good old Sharpie. Hmm. To get into this. But maybe if I'd been more accurate with my spraying. I wouldn't have needed to take such drastic action. Does that improve it? Not a hundred percent certain. Since I can have a clearer view of what I'm doing, I'm going to try it this way. If I go too far, I'm just going to run it through it and see. Oh! If I come back in the same place, or whether I'm making... Ah, uh, I am making a lovely thick spiral. Oh, 
Let's try again with another line. But I think, in terms of experimenting and playing around, that is probably it. I'm going to leave that foot on because uh, this is going to be used again. It's already been used several times, as you've seen. I'm just going to assess whether, for photographic purposes, I should tidy this top up. I think probably for photographic purposes, I should. Right, so I'm not going to put any finish on. I'm trying to find my tack cloth. Moving stuff around. Well, it was quite an effort to get this um, 300 kilogram lathe moved on my own. And most of the workshop had to be moved. And I can't find everything. Hmm. Here it is. Rather, rather dusty tack cloth. I could put a bit of cut and polish on there just to tidy it up, but this is not going to have a finish on. It was a, another one of my playtimes. So let's get it out, get some a closer look at it, and that will be another video done. So here we go. Bits of it I really like, bits of it I don't like. This bit I really like, the bit there where there's that, see some of the blue coming through. And that's definitely something I'm going to do a bit more of, deliberately pulling away some of the colour. For me, having to put the black lines in though, to neaten it, I think it's taken away, taken away more than it's added. But you may disagree. And in places, the coverage from the Sharpie is not uh, not very deep. And in some places, not very neat. But you don't really expect neatness from me, do you? I mean, look at my hair. Until next time, thanks for watching.